Hello to everyone and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Tanner Swift and I'll be your moderator for this session. I'm pleased to introduce today's speaker, Ruthine Duran Vigendi. But before I hand the mic over to our presenter, I do have a few housekeeping items to cover about this presentation. Today's webinar will be recorded and made available on demand after a live session. We will provide you with some of those details near the end. Also, we'd love to hear from you during today's presentation. If you are with us here on WebEx and have any question for our speaker, please submit them through the Q&A panel where our wonderful panelists are ready to respond or we will answer those during the Q&A section of this session. If you experience any audio issues, please use the call in number displayed on the chat screen. I will share that once again momentarily. So without further ado, we'd like to kick things off by welcoming Ruth Indren. Over to you. Hey everyone, thank you. So Tanner, can you see me see? Yes, I can. Ah, great. Hey everyone, welcome to the session. So uh, as Tanner mentioned, today we're gonna to talk about SD-WAN software upgrade. Uh, we will be discussing about the process, workflow, step-by-step -step process involved in the software upgrade. I am myself, Sutindran Vijendran. I, what you see is Vijendi, that's easier for people to call me, search me internally. I'm a solution architect myself in SD-WAN in the customer success org. So today you will be seeing how to prepare for an upgrade, as I said, including uh, like we will review the product compatibility matrix and how do you upgrade it and some of the analysis and what is needed for an upgrade, how uh, uh, the post upgrade, pre upgrade checklist and uh, what are the upgrade scenarios involved, like the controller upgrade or your van edge devices upgrade and everything and all the process and steps to perform the upgrade. So uh, to take a look on the, uh, quickly on the agenda part. So today we'll be talking on the SD-WAN high-level architecture, what are the components involved and what are the deployment types available with SD-WAN at this point and why upgrade is necessary. With all this uh, software being introduced in every three months or six months and th those things have been made as a golden release and everything. So why upgrade is necessary, we'll be talking on that. And uh, what are the steps involved in upgrading your SD-WAN fabric? and how do you perform that. Also, we'll be discussing on upgrading and activating the controllers and the best practices involved in it, not just the controllers, your managers as well. Like say, we would talk about the overlay, the controller part and your uh, edge devices uh, part as well. And a quick demo on the AV managed fabric on uh, what are the options available in the SD-WAN fabric, the graphical user interface. I'll walk you through the SD-WAN fabric at the end of the session. So Cisco Catalyst SD-WAN architecture and deployment types. So this is the SD-WAN architecture. Probably everybody would have seen this by now. And this has been our uh, architecture components involved in the SD-WAN fabric for like five to six years now, what we're talking about in this slide. So all of this SD-WAN solution when we talk, it's just consists of just four elements, which is the orchestration plane on the left, and then the management plane on the right, then Right below that is the control plane and the data plane. As you might know, when we talk about our orchestration plane, that is nothing but your V bond. It's the first point of authentication for any device coming into the network. What it just uh, what it does is, if a managed device needs to join a fabric, is divine fabric, it will just contact the V bond first. The V bond will understand and see if the authenticate if it's a legitimate one if it's whitelisted devices and everything and then it will let the device know about other entities involved in the fabric like the vman is the vsmart and everything and then it will be joining the fabric and it also facilitate nat traversal which is nothing but it will act as a stand server then comes your management plane nothing but your vmanage it's a graphical user interface single plane of glass for your day zero one two operations and this is the place where you can configure, you can monitor, you can troubleshoot, you can upgrade. Everything can be done from your vManage. Uh, so it also supports role-based access control and APIs. And then your control plane, your uh, vSmart. This is uh, nothing but your uh, uh, like a BGP route layer factor. Basically it dissimulates uh, control plane information between your vManage devices. And lastly, the data plane, your vanages. So it can be a physical router or virtual router. It can be placed on a cloud or it can be on your data center anywhere at all. It also, whatever the routers as a physical router or vanage router supports is what the data plane is, like the zero touch provisioning. Again, implement all your data plane policies. Again, the performance statistics, everything can be taken over from your 
vanished out this and the complete fabric again the uh, communication is from between your vanished devices it is all the ipsec uh, communication it's all tunnel encrypted one and from your uh, data plane and your controllers it's going to be a dtls or tls connection for your overlay environment being said that <coughs> rebranding the announcement i think you would have been heard uh, about this so uh, with whatever i spoke now about the we manage we bond we smart all of the controllers has been new naming has been introduced which is nothing but cisco sd wan is going to be called as cisco catalyst sd wan again in all the documentation what you'll be finding is cisco catalyst sd wan again on the screens like the ui and all the screens you will be seeing again the same as cisco catalyst sd wan the documentation will also reflect the same again there are some of the differences with for other uh, uh, entities like the we manage the cisco catalyst sd wan v manager it will be the documentation will be as sd wan manager and the uh, screens what you see on the ui and everything is going to be manager again some of the documents will still remain as the we manage so it's nothing but the slide is again to showcase and flash for you to just to understand to let you know about how the things will be in the future like say from 2012 is what the rebranding is being introduced so from 2012 version 1712 or 2012 is divan version is where all the new names would come into the picture these are the these are the names would be reflected on the 2012 images on your uh, user interface as well so it goes with until the we bond we smart again self service portal the cloud delivered cisco sd wan this is these are the information just to uh, uh, for you to be aware of it and then the controller deployment methodologies so we typically have uh, two of the methods which you will see on the screen which is hosted and on premises so when we talk about the hosted environment basically most of the customers would always go for the most hosted environment because uh, it's is as easy as like like you just place an order and uh, for the controllers and it will be ready like cisco would do the uh, work for you and it will just give you the uh, login uh, uh, a link and the login credentials for that and you will have your controllers hosted and we take care of all of the um, uh, entities involved into it as of today we would support all the popular uh, cloud platforms like aws azure gcp and everything and for on premises again this is where the controllers are deployed as you may know which is deployed on esxi or a kvm machine again uh, whether be it it's hosted in the cloud environment or on premises all of this uh, overlay controllers like the vbond vsmart or uh, the platform authentication strikes right? all of this will be authenticated provision the network infrastructures verifying your devices connecting to your sd wan be authorized or not it's going to be a secure environment be it on premises or hosted environment moving on with the next topic why upgrade is necessary okay let me <coughs> yeah resolving the t cert issues again uh as you may know the cisco product security incident response team that is the p cert issue right again uh, the p cert uh, stands for again it's a dedicated global team that manages your recent investigations and uh, some of the, some of the public reporting of security vulnerability informations again that is related to your cisco products or again the network or the software again if there is a p cert issue involved if there is a vulnerability involved there are there are ways there is work around and there are sometimes there is only way to solve this one is through an upgrade again all of this upgrading benefits right is easier again and it will be done through we manage and is easier to manage through we manage which is a monitoring aspect as well with that p cert issues we also have performance improvement with a better performance right with the with the newer versions every upgrade will have some of the performance improvement when compared to the older versions and then comes the obvious uh, feature enhancements uh, where uh, cisco is always working on better enhancements of the features you can always find in your cco for your uh, what's new in every releases like say now we have 2012 as i mentioned about all of the uh, rebranding new names and everything you can still find out in a separate document documentation of what's new in 2012 or what's new in the cisco suggested software which is available on the cco So at this point, I think twenty nine uh, version is the 
uh, Cisco suggested uh, version. So we can also find what are the features involved in it, how are the enhancements made compared to the older versions and everything. And then we call this a safe harbor. Again, the hardened code. So basically, the aim is to encourage the customers to move away from a really old version because we see people for still in 17.18 version. Again, they're restricted with certain features. And uh, th this is also difficult if they want to go to a latest version. They have to always go with a step upgrade. So they cannot upgrade from a very old version to the latest version directly. So we have an hardened code, which is on a 23 or higher versions. So scoping impact for scope, uh, software upgrades. So here it is just to give you an idea of uh, what are the impact, business impact, or the what are the risks involved in upgrading your SD WAN fabric. When we when I keep talking about fabric, that involves again your controllers as well as your WAN edge devices. Like say the planes, control plane, when we talk about the management plane, orchestration plane, the control plane and the data plane is what the planes are and the components involved in it. Like as you may know, the V-Bond, V-Smart and then your V-Manage in the van edge devices. Like say how the upgrade involves, what are the things to be considered or how, what would happen during an upgrade. Like this is again, when I say upgrading your fabric, upgrading your management plane, it can be done. All of these components can be done through vManage itself. Again, there is no impact on the upgrade for the vManage if and uh, if the upgrade fails for, for some reason, it will again roll back to the older version, the previous version, version what it was running. Again, that is considered as low impact because uh, and there's no the, there will not be any impact for the data plane, the traffic running into it, or the vSmart as well. So that's why the vBond, the vManage is low impact. Again, when it comes to vSmart or the vanish, that's going to be a bit of high impact because uh, your data plane will still not be affected until the graceful restart kicks in the vSmart. So the then, only then, when the graceful restart clicks in, only then the data plane will go up go down and that would affect the business. So there should always be a validation can be done and uh, before and after the upgrade to understand this. Again, the vantage, your physical routers, your branches, your data centers, be it anything. Again, that could also have an impact if something goes wrong and uh, you are upgrading one device at a time and then validating how the data plane functionalities works is always recommended as well. <clears throat> and software, software upgrade journey. As I said before, if you're really the really old version, we would always have a safe harbor, as you said. You would have to go through a step upgrade process. Now say, if you're in 23, you can still go for a latest version. There's no issues. But if you're in 18 or anything below 23, you would always have to go to the 23 version first and then move to the next uh, versions, whatever the latest version is. For example, if a customer is in 18.34 or a 19.2, they should first upgrade to 23x, any of the 23 version, and move on to the latest versions or move on to the Cisco suggested uh, software uh, versions. So again, as uh, we have given you the link, uh, I've provided you the link. I think this link will also be provided for you uh, just to understand the compatibility matrix, how this, uh, whatever the information I'm talking, which will also be there. If you're in version, you can try out and see which particular version you can go, what are the step upgrading you want in it. And this step upgrade process is for your controllers as well as your data plane like your managed devices. Now we are moving into the steps for upgrading your SD-WAN fabric. Like what are the steps involved? How do you perform the upgrades? Now, <clears throat> this is as simple as that when you see the screen, it is uh, centralized software management. Like uh, you have a, you have your managed devices uh, on, the, on the router, what you would do. Basically, you would download the software, you will upload it to your managed uh, devices, and then you would just activate the software, right? So all the steps, again, these are all done by your vManage itself. Sorry. Now, what would you do when the upgrade process involves, like say the first stage or second stage, how the activation would work, right? Say to begin with, 
you would go to the software upgrade screen like uh, in your CCO uh, download the software.download or cisco.com or software.cisco.com you can download the software from there and then your newer software will be available wherein you would download the software upload it to the uh, vmanage uh, vmanage nms or you can also have it in your in any of your ftp servers right like say <clears throat> software and sdwan device again the overlay network how does the upgrade work there should obviously there should be a reboot of the devices to activate it you can do this for a single device or a multiple device simultaneously there do not be any issues again all of the controller devices must run the same software version that is something important all of the controller devices must run the same software version and that is all cisco sd wan we manage right the we manage uh, sd wan manager now the we manage instances must run the same software version and all cisco sd wan controllers like the we born with the we smart must also run the same software version of what it is in the we manage and your sd wan validator which should be your uh, we smart and the we born must run the same version so all of the controllers should have also the same version that's what uh, the and you can also before the uh, upgrade process involved what you can do is you can also go through the release notes once to understand the feature set to understand what is uh, uh, available what are the features available or what are the configs available already on your network how the prior feature set would work what are the prerequisites involved in that and it is always good to have a compatibility uh, matrix uh, with you to check what are the version the controllers running and what are the version the managed devices the controllers can be higher versions than your edge devices but cannot be lower than your edge devices it can be equal and higher than your managed devices so you have to uh, download the software upload it to your ftp server or upload it to your vmanage repository and then what you do is you activate the software upgrade process is done so no impact on the upgrade is once you want to activate it is what the reload will occur and then the new software comes in and if the activation failed it will always go back to the available software which is there if it's not deleted so it will always roll back that is another uh, safe option with sd wan which have minimal impact if something goes wrong again the workflow so software upgrade workflow what you see on the step by step process involved in this now as i said you download the software from software.cisco.com again upload it to the vmanage repository and your controller you can upgrade the software on the vmanage and to your storage disk basically if it's an on premises you would have the space allocated for your hosting the controllers right so basically your vmanage will have the repository where you can download it so now you can upgrade the software version of the controller devices like the vmanage uh, network management service like uh, nms and then the v smart and then the v bond basically are overlay controllers without upgrading your vanage routers to the same version as i said it can be the higher version or cannot it, it doesn't need to have the same version however the software version running on the controllers right device must be compatible with the version which is available on the edge routers like say that's why the matrix software compatibility matrix will also come into the picture to make sure that the controllers version is compatible with your edge devices version as well also based on the size of your sdwan environment the fabric environment you should be prepared as an upgrade plan i would say like say what should you upgrade first and uh, with the branches or the data center again okay, right it depends again as you see on the slide a good rule of thumb may be to space the upgrading to allow some soaking time i would say like for example uh, you take the top line here the controllers right it's all about the controllers upgrade options so after the v bond has been upgraded monitor your sd wan for um, for any anomalies or any issues at all for ensure and it is uh, in a steady state i would say give it 24 hours and then move to the v smart and again by monitoring the environment validating the policies as function as intended you can move the upgrading to the edge devices so that's how you can you upgrade the controller first monitor it validate the policies and everything if it's working the functioning as intended and then move on to your 
data plane vanish devices so basically having a strategy is something uh, which always good and uh, you can reinforce all the successful upgrading right for your sd band and this will also help in simplifying your troubleshooting environment if something goes wrong <coughs> So this is basically the activation coming to the picture. So you verify, you upgrade it. Once you, when you want to activate it is when the reload happens and then the impact also come to the picture, right? So if you are upgrading all of the devices in your overlay network, you must perform the upgrade in this uh, in an order, right? Like say for a SD-WAN fabric upgrade, what you have to do is you have to first upgrade your vManage LMS only. The first is a vManage and then your vbond orchestrator and then half of your uh, v smart control like say why i'm saying half or uh, uh, or number of vbonds in the world. so there are clusters or uh, there are customers who have two two v smarts two v bonds or um, they have something like that right if more than one is in form so you would say half of them so you upgrade the vmanage nms and you upgrade your uh, vbond upgrade your vSmart and then you go to your managed devices. That's how the upgrade process, upgrade uh, steps, the uh, flow should be for your sd band. So once you upgrade the vSmart controllers, right? As I said, you upgrade and then you monitor it, you verify for the policies or anomalies or again, you see, make sure that things are working fine as expected. So for the vSmart controllers, you can at least run it for a day, 24 hours to ensure that managed devices and the overlay network are stable and running as expected. So for the vSmart controllers, this is, again, upgrade and then once this is done, like say if it's one vSmart, then it's fine. If it's more than one, then you can and uh, check this anomalies and then move on to the other vSmart in your environment. And when it comes to the managed devices, like your route, physical routers or again virtual environment, right? Like all of your uh, data plane uh, devices. So it's always good to go with newer software with 10% of managed devices. Say for example, 100 devices are there, 10% of the devices can be upgraded first, can be activated with the newer software and then move on to the next uh, set of devices. 10, 10% is what something is always uh, good to go with that which have which can have a minimal impact again if something goes on can also roll back to the older version but having 10 percent of devices is always good so again the same concept would go for vantage devices as well like say once you upgraded the 10 percent of the vantage routers can if it's a multi-router site it is recommended that you upgrade only one router per site and uh, once the upgrade is done again run it for at least 24 hours uh, to ensure that sd device devices, the OLA network are again running stable and as expected with all your configs and functionalities and everything. And then upgrade the remainder of your edge routers. Let's say, how do you upgrade it? Let's say, as I said, you download the software. Again, you put it in the software repository or again, the FTP server, right? So if the new software images are located on an FTP server, ensure the FTP server can handle the concurrent file transfers. Like say you have number of managed devices, but transferring the files, transferring the software images to the overlay environment, something oh, you have to be taken care of. So make sure that it can handle that. And if if your new software, again, uh, images are in the image repository of Cisco vManage, um, I'll, I'll show you where it is when I'm performing the demo for you. So if it's in the vManage, ensure that the van is in the Cisco vManage located uh, basically has a sufficient capacity for file transfers. Again, in uh, maximum of 40 devices, the vManage will push to uh, at, at the same time, even if you upgrade all the devices. But again, you'll have to make sure the sufficient capacity for it. And it is always that you cannot include your, uh, sorry, you cannot include your vManage, Cisco vManage in a group upgrade, right? The vManage should always be the first. You must upgrade and reboot the vManage server by itself first. So you first upgrade your vManage and then activate it and then reboot. Basically activating is rebooting. And then once it comes up the newer software and then you move on to the next controller entities. So basically you must, <clears throat> in a group software operation, you can upgrade up to 40 devices of your edge devices, as I said. Um, again, it goes with your, it, it is the same for your van, uh, VH, if 
if at all any of them using V8, it's also the same for them. And it's HCSD one devices. You can reboot and activate it. But so at a time you can uh, upgrade it to 40 devices, but then you can upgrade it. There are customers who upgrade it and then wait for a maintenance window to activate it. Basically, it involves a reboot, right? So to activate and reboot, you can do it 100 devices at the same time. Again, uh, simultaneously for 100 devices, both for your VH and your HD WAN, uh, XE HD WAN devices simultaneously. These maximum numbers, right? Assume that Cisco VMAN is idle and only upgrade and reboot operation being carried out. So there's Basically, what we are trying to say is we are the V manager should be idle. We are not performing any other operations to handle the uh, upgrade options and everything. So that's how it is. And uh, in case of other management tasks are occurring, the V manage the same time. And, uh, basically, the number of sessions, number of available sessions will reduce as um, as it is understandable. If it's concurrent session going on, we would have less number of uh, available sessions. So when you are setting a software image to the default software image activate it first before making it to the default because we, we are not sure if the upgrade and the activation would work uh, completely or not if at all something wrong with the software or during the file transfer because again even if it's going to be an upgrade from a file transfer like ftp server uh, all of the image should be coming into the transfer if for some reason for timeout or if there is any reason that the file is not completely transferred that could be an impact on the upgrade itself or the business itself right so basically what we're trying to say is we activate the software first once it is up and running and then make it as a default so why default when we say is once you upgrade once you uh, have uh, your default version running on it or during the future upgrade if you want to reset your fabric or anything it will come to the default version that's the point for the default uh, version right so what we, what we discussed is all about uh, the performance what are the uh, things which you keep in mind and what you do for an upgrade and how are things to be carried out right now for the controllers um, upgrade and activations best practices so maintenance window planning. So it's always recommended to have a maintenance window. For an upgrade, it's still fine. Uh, but, uh, it's to have a slight maintenance window still fine because you're not activating it. For an activation, it's always uh, maintenance window is recommended. Right? So you can do a software upgrade at any time. However, as I said, a small maintenance window to address this just to make sure uh, your file transfer is okay and everything is going on. And uh, you might want to have a different maintenance window, as I said, for your controllers and your uh, WAN is separate windows, like say for your uh, controllers. When I say controllers, it's going to be our V manage, we want the V smarts. So make sure that you have a window to activate the software once it's upgrade is done and assess your impact. Again, as I said, if there's going to be a problem, it's going to go rolled back, but then assess your business impact and risk, ass risk assessments for that particular window timing, whatever, be it 30 minutes or one hour or whatever. So may make sure that you have that uh, planning onto it. And edge devices, again, yeah, consider your bandwidth utilization. You might want to cover during this um, uh, maintenance window for your bandwidth utilization. And software activation, as I said, you can upgrade it once you activate it for that activation you would need a maintenance window for it i will show you what is um, the process what are the uh, in the user interface in the v manage when during the demo i'll show you where is the upgrade option where is the activate option what i'm talking about you would have a more clearer picture as well in that time and then the prereq for your best uh, upgrade basically the best practices so your as I say, as you can see in the screen, uh, the overlay network must be operational and uh, most always use the vManage uh, graphical user interface for the upgrade. It's easier and it's easier to yeah, troubleshoot also if something goes wrong and it's always rolled back as well. Do not use the CLI portion of it like what we do in the uh, older days like software upgrade uh, with the USB flash or anything. So it's always good to go with the vManage upgrade. And uh, as I said, for the activation, take out the maintenance window ahead, book for it, change plan in, in management or whatever the process involved in the maintenance window can have for it and then activate the software. And uh, <clears throat> make sure that the WAN capability, the WAN link, 
for the vManage where it has the capacity of concurrent file transfers because if you're upgrading for a bulk upgrade like more than and uh, 40 devices more than uh, 25 devices or something like that so you have make sure that you have banding capability for that and as i said your vManage is going to be first upgrade activated and then your con other controllers will be there and then comes your vanish so basically we we manage first we manage and then the v bond v smart controllers must be upgraded separately and then your edge devices we'll talk about vanish also in later part of the section now when uh, there's one more thing you can also have a configuration uh, backup basically config db we talk about in the v manage so you can do it in the CLI and uh, the command is basically request NMS configuration backup and your new file path just to make sure that you have all the configurations as well as I said it will roll back it will it will go to the default version and everything and uh, some of the customers will also take a snapshot of the v manage of before the upgrade and they also have a config db backup just to make sure that everything goes well you can also do the perform uh, backup through API using uh, SAS 3 script. Uh, Shastri script as well and uh, if it's going to be Cisco hosted Cisco would always have uh, everyday backup of your uh, controllers and your uh, fabric so that shouldn't be a problem as well <clears throat> best practices so now coming to the step by step um, I, I know we have a lot of uh, text here I'll quickly go to the demo part as well you quickly finish this and go to the vManage fabric uh, just to cover you so that you are uh, aware of what is it when I'm showing you the vManage is what I'm trying to do here. So what are the step-by-step -step process? You would uh, add a new software image in the repository uh, or through an external server. You would have two options in the vManage, basically the image repository and the external FTP server. And then I say, as I'm repeating from the beginning, like uh, upgrading the vManage and then your controllers and then upgrade is successful or not. And then same approach for all of your remaining controllers as well. If it's if you have more than one controllers. And then comes so now we talked about the upgrade as I said, and then the activation. Activation is activation of the software is what gives you the newer code. Activate the new code on your vManage first, and then your controllers. The next uh, processes. <clears throat> So now once the controllers is done, controllers upgrade is done, now we come to the vanish. So as I said, it is all the process and again, the step-by-step -step process of your vManage and the controllers v one and the v one all of the three uh, comes into the controllers uh, aspect itself. Now for vanish, same process, what we do for that. So vanish device recommendations, again, right? How do you activate it? you can plan this again the activation part like uh, we usually talk to customers and what we find out is we have a lab environment like a production test environment or a poc environment what we do what where they are doing already and then they also mark out separately of a low risk sites or how the risk environment right based on the business impact they will segregate that part and then they will go on to that part as a, they will schedule a maintenance window and then upgrade all of those devices. So you can also perform that low risk site, medium risk, and then high risk. You can segregate that. I can, can go in 10% uh, of the devices for each of the environment, each of the sites, and perform the activation part of it. Once you have activated, validate your function for the network services, right? All of your features, all of your day-to-day uh, -day activities, all of the operations should be come into the picture, come into the line after the upgrade as well. So in case, again, as I said, if it's a multi-router site, it is recommended to limit your activations router per site. So that way you can also have backup options. And if there is something goes wrong, you can also have a uh, backup environment for that <coughs> particular site. Again, the best practices, upgrade and activation. How do you upgrade? As I said, uh, as we're talking from the beginning of the slide, like upgrade 10% of the vantage routers. In case of multi-router, you can still upgrade both, both the routers. Again, pause on the upgrading rest of, until 10% of routers successfully upgraded, activated. As I said, you can upgrade and activate 10% of, 10 of the routers, wait for the functionalities, wait for everything is okay. Uh, usually everything will be fine. There are very rare instances where things are going wrong, but it is always the best practices to wait and plan the maintenance window and then go for it. Again, the activation, as I said before, plan the site based on your lower, medium or high risk sites and upgrade it accordingly and validate your environment. And upgrade and activation best practices. So what are the do's 
and uh, what what do you don't do basically like uh, what are the best practices involved in always consider the recommended upgrade path say uh, as i said before sometime back i was talking about the step upgrade like if you have a really old version it is always you should go through the step upgrade process also in the cco cisco software download page you would see a star mark image which is basically cisco recommended software based on the longevity and the bug fixes for that particular version so it's always good to go with the star mark list as well and your controller software version should be higher than your edge uh, software version basically if you have uh, physical routers uh, your uh, sites uh, all the data plane environment should have uh, the controller version should have higher than your edge devices and you whatever the session whatever the demo and however the uh, best practice involved you should always check your compatibility matrix first what is the version running on your uh, uh, we manage what is the version you're going to go to the viewer from from what version you're going to jump to what version like say if it's going to be really old how the step upgrade process will involve what are the steps involved into the step upgrade and then you go to the latest version so all of the things in uh, matters and then take a uh, backup uh, usually uh, you can do a vmanage snapshot or the config db from your vmanage and you can keep the newer image like say now if i'm having an 183 version i would go to 23 first and then now i see uh, cco as uh, cisco recommended software is 29.x so i will upgrade activate the 29 and i'll make that as a default version that's basically a safe harbor safe harbor to uh, if something happens if for the fabric or anything you'll go back on to the default version and what you don't do basically which i think uh, it's just that uh, you just have to make sure that everything you uh, best practices you follow and uh, uh, not upgrading uh, without any backups backups so just to make sure things go wrong and again uh, what is the uplink capacity because if you push software images to many number of edge devices and if there's a link issues coming in the software uh, image will not be completely gone to the devices and there can be timeout issues or any other uh, connectivity issues which will fail your upgrade so all of these things uh, matters so moving on the rollback strategy again uh, for the we manage it is recommended to take a snapshot as i said we manage you can always go back to the previous version and if it's cisco hosted environment uh, cisco team cloud ops team they they'll always daily they take a snapshot of the we manage and in case of failure, you can always raise a tag case to restore the snapshot of what it's been done. And uh, as I said, as we also uh, repeated a couple of times, it could also good to have a config DB backup, which will resolve most of the issues because uh, once you have the configurations, WAF is running already. So if you're going to replace that, it should be should, everything will be uh, should be fine. And with the van edge devices, you can again reactivate the previous version if something goes wrong. Again, the old image will remain on your devices 15 days before being automatically removed. So you still have a buffer time of 15 days to go over that. Okay, now we come into the demo. Now I've spoke all of the PPTs. Now I'll just quickly go through the vManage dashboard. I will show you what I have in the lab. My eBay browser. Okay, not this. Firefox. I hope uh, you, everybody uh, can see me in Firefox. Uh, Tana, you can see me in Firefox, right? Like, yes, sir, uh, all good. All right, perfect. So <clears throat> let me see if I'm still logged in. Okay, okay, perfect. So this is my lab. Uh, what we have now is the uh, UI, uh, graphical user interface of vManage. Now let's, I'm just showing you what version we're running, 29.3. Again, this is a recommended version from the Cisco uh, download page. And uh, we have this version running on our lab as well. And this is a quick overview on the dashboard. Like say, you see controllers, we bond, we smart, we manage. Again, uh, from 2012, you'll be seeing different names in all of the places, like say, SDN manager or orchestrator. And, and what are the, all the new rebranding names would be appeared in the UI from 2012 versions. And we have nine VH devices. We'll show you what are the Van Edge, uh, Van Edge Health Index. 
and uh, what are the BFD connectivities, transport interface distribution, like how the interface is being distributed. Again, the applications part as well, like what are the applications running and uh, it can give you more detailed invent, uh, inventory part of it. And uh, one of the popular uh, feature with SD-WAN application of our routing. So we have a lot of sessions involved, all of the features, all the dashboard involved uh, with this. Now let's quickly jump to our uh, sessions uh, with our upgrade process. Now we have all of the options here, something similar, but we can, we can still play around if you have any of them have uh, we manage uh, UI, we manage dashboard with, you, uh, with near environment. So now we go to the <coughs> monitor configuration and tools we have, how the maintenance pro, uh, option. Now we go to the software repository. So this is what I was saying. If it's going to be a remote server, if it's on any FTP server or if there's any other server we have, we can have this in the remote server and add all of your remote server name into it. Like basically the details of the remote server where you're going to, what some of the customers, what they do is they upload all of the software, everything on the server which they have uh, number of uh, space and they have, they have no issues with respect to the server and everything. So what we can do is of uploading the images, the images to the vManage itself, you can still upload it, upgrade it, activate it from your remote server. So this is where you give all of your credentials and add the remote server to your uh, fabric, to your environment. And then comes your software images. And uh, what you see here is virtual images in the firmware, basically, here, the software images, the virtual images, right? Virtual images, as it goes by the name, if you're gonna have any of your uh, virtual environment, like say CAT 8KB or uh, Azure uh, uh, 1000V or uh, VH Cloud environment. So you'll have images for that. You can find images separately on the uh, software download page as well. Now for software images, <clears throat> now we have, what are the images? Now we have vManage what you see in the software repository. All of the images, whatever you download, it's gonna be location is the vManage because we're gonna put it in the repositories in the vManage. So the location is vManage. Again, the version, software version 29.3 goes for the controllers. Again, 17. any version, 17.x, 17.9 goes to vanage devices. That's how you see it. Now you can see the file name as well, ASR or 4300 device. Again, this is for the vManage and everything. So how do you add a new software to the software depo repository? Now we have a remote server. Again, you don't have to uh, add, uh, uh, do a little bit of congestion for the space or anything. Make sure that you can have a remote server and then uh, you can load it, drag it from that. Or again, the vManage, uh, you can add a new software from the vManage again. So this is something uh, for, because of the lab environment, we do this. Basically, we drag, drop, we download the software, we upload it here, we browse, and then from wherever it is, we will just uh, upload it in the software. Once it is there, it will be available here. So that's how, and you can also search. Now, which is because of the lab environment, we have very limited uh, devices and options. Uh, you can also search for your environment here. So this is basically the repository, what we are talking about. And then comes your upgrade options. Once you have, uh, images on your repository. Now you can go ahead and upgrade the option. And then you have all of these options. Like say, now for now what we're seeing is the, for the managed devices. Now, as I said, your vManage would be separately upgraded and activated, uh, basically upgrade, activate. And then once it is in the newer version, then it you have to upgrade the controllers part, which is basically your vBond and the vSmart. Now, as you can see in the vManage, what we have, the default versions is 27. So if something, if we have a default version, now we have to make sure that 29 is the default version. Now, uh, anyway, at this point we have 27. If something goes wrong, if any of the issues happen, now we will have to, we, the fabric will go to the 27. So now we have also the controllers part, vSmart and then the vBond. Now, how do we act? What are the options available? Same uh, for the V, we have all of these options, like say activate, and it has been activated with the 29.3 already, and delete the available software if there is a software, downloaded images if there is anything, or you can also set default version. Now, this is also an option of upgrade. So when I click on upgrade, now it will ask for the version. What is the version running? So this is something 
only 29 version uh, software is what we uploaded in the repository so it is there if there is more than one version you would see in the drop down of 27 or if there is anything you would still see it then once you click on it you will have to activate this part activate and reboot once you do that is what the impact is so for that it will basically require a reload and it will upgrade your uh, software same thing goes again you can also select your uh, edge devices how, uh, how much uh, what number of devices if it's going to be xc hd van or v edge devices again depends on and what is the device and how it has been uh, you have environment in your end uh, in your SD-WAN fabric. So now we have ASRs, couple of ASRs, couple of 8Ks, and uh, we have a VEdge as well. So for a VEdge, it's different uh, software, as you may know. Now we can have all of these options available in your UI itself. Like say, now I'm gonna upgrade it. Now, as you see, uh, I don't have an image for an 800, uh, sorry, 8K device, but then for an ASR, we still have an image of 17.9. So now it's also saying that following devices do not have available software version. So now, as you may see, for the devices, what have been selected, like say 8K, two of the 8Ks, we don't have image on the repository. As you saw before, we had only 29 or 79 device in the repository. So you can also skip that option and you can activate the newer version on the devices. So if you do this, if you don't click on this activate and reboot, it will just upgrade. It will just upgrade and it will still be on the vManage. It will still be available for you to activate. So you don't have to worry. So what people do is uh, they will load the image into the repository. They also upgrade it and keep it. And during a weekend or during a maintenance window is what they, uh, act, they click on this activate and reboot and then perform the upgrade options. So now we have all of these options, set a default version and everything. You can still go ahead and uh, do this uh, for the number of devices. If it's not being managed, uh, sorry, 8K devices, you can still go for uh, V edge or the C edge and see what we still don't have <coughs> the images for the 8KV. Again, these are the devices, the same process involved in it. So these others, I'm not uh, upgrading, I'm not showing because it will take forever, but um, I'm just showing you the options of how things will go in, uh, into the options. Now the device reboot. Now again, here you can select hundreds of devices, 100 devices together and reboot the options. So basically nothing but uh, this, is, this is something, if you had clicked on it, uh, if you had clicked on activate and reboot, and then upgrade that will upgrade already but when you upgrade it when you don't click on the activate and upgrade once you reload the devices then it come into the latest version as well so this is just for the reload option nothing nothing related to what what we do on the what we are trying to say is everything whatever you do from your v manage um, everything can be done from your v manage itself for your edge man fabric and as i i kept saying about the software this is what we see on the repository and that's the reason we keep seeing uh there's no software for 8k or vh device because this is what we we have it in the repository now we can download and upgrade in the software once you do that you can also monitor it so i say uh, once you go for the devices, once you upgrade on the devices, then <clears throat> you would see what the reachability for the devices, what are the host name and the device model and everything. And you can see what are the memory, I mean, basically the device system status where, uh, for that uh, devices. Say now if I clicked on any of the devices, you would also see after the upgrade, uh, if what about the physical entities like fans or power supplies and what are the CPU and memory for it. How things would go this is basically the device name and the ip4 address model and everything so that's basically one of the options and uh, <coughs> if i go on to the device part again you would see what number of devices what we have how it is being synced with this in sync with the vmanage and what are the options available for your devices as well. So it is all about uh, how do you manage and how do you uh, make use of all of the options available in your SD-WAN fabric. 
and how the how the operations and the upgrade pod, uh, options would perform into this. So with that being said, I will uh, go back to our uh, PPT and uh, let's quickly talk about the points to remember. And uh, because uh, <clears throat> we had uh, we had the PPT going through and then a lot of text involved and then a couple of options with the UI, right? So what is the SUN architecture? Basically understand that part and the entities involved in it. The, uh, we, got, we kept discussing about the controllers and then the overlay controllers, uh, VBON, VSmart, VManage, and then the Vanage. So just understand how they are related, how the Vanage devices would be communicating with your uh, overlay environment, how the upgrade would Im Im impact your uh, business or impact the environment, network environment. And then centralized upgrade. We, got, we keep talking about centralized upgrade because from your VManage is what your VManage and then single pane of glass. So you can upgrade your VManage itself, all of the controllers, as well as your edge devices. And then we talked about the best practices. When we say best practices, follow the flow or follow the uh, overlay, perform the, in the following order, like say, uh, like the V manage first, uh, with your uh, V bond orchestrator, V smart, and then the uh, environment. And then the best practices take the config DB, take a V, v manage snapshot of it if possible, and uh, verify the compatibility matrix. Very important. Your uh, overlay, your uh, uh, controller should be higher version, higher software version than your uh, uh, Vanage devices. Say, for example, you saw in my lab this 29.3. Your, your uh, controllers can be in 29.3 and uh, uh, your Vanage devices cannot be in 2012. So it can be less than 29, but it cannot be more uh, about higher than 29. So that's what I'm trying to say. And why software maintenance and how uh, importance of software maintenance Right, you always have to be on a Cisco suggested release, like a golden release or safe harbor, so that it has a lot of features, important features, bug fixes, and vulnerabilities fixed. And uh, <clears throat> how important the upgrade is, what are the features involved in it? Those are the key pointers. And uh, for the QA, we are here. Uh, I'll go through the um, chat as well. This is something in the SDVAN community. We have YouTube videos as well for upgrade, and I uh, can also go through the links and everything. Um, to, to turn, let's uh, quickly see what we have. <clears throat> uh, Tanner, is there any other questions? If yeah, anything comes, let me know. We'll, we'll get to a few here. We have some time to to answer a few. I did uh, provide those links in the uh, chat screen. Yeah. Um, for people to use and um. If we can't get to all of these, no worries. We will provide you with a post webinar discussion thread here in a little bit as well that you can follow up, ask any additional questions you may have um, as well. Uh, let's get to this recent question from Ernesto. What if the Edge SW activation fails? Will it reboot on the previous version? Yes, it will activate. It will go back to the, uh, so for Edge devices, right? Yeah, it will go back to the previous version. If the reboot fails, it will go back to the default version, which is available on the SD-WAN fabric itself. Perfect. Uh, da, da, da. Can the default 15-day retention be changed to, let's say, 30 days? No, at this point, it's 15 days only. Uh, with Cisco, the latest software, with the latest releases, it is uh, 15 days at this point. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, what is the correct version uh, that all SD WAN solution drivers should have? So it is. Uh, there's no one particular version as the correct version, I would say, because um, okay. uh, Cisco always has uh, every three months, every six months, we have a software release, a software versions coming in based on the previous. Uh, previous version, we compare it and we have a newer features, newer bug fixes, newer vulnerability uh, fix issues have been addressed with the newer releases. So it's always good to look into the software download page, check for the star marked releases. Now at this point, 29.3 is the star marked one, which is basically Cisco suggested software. So what I'm trying to say is you always go to the Cisco suggested software, which is a longer uh, release. Great, perfect, perfect. Yeah. Uh, just sorting through a couple here. Mm -hmm. uh, da, 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 da. 
In 17.9.3a, is there a behavior known for SEDGE after reload routes are redistributed locally into BGP already? Uh, although the data playing through SD-WAN is not ready yet. Uh, okay. I have to look into that. I am not uh, really sure about no that. No worries. Uh, in the Q&A yeah, panel, yeah. if you scroll up towards the top. Uh, it is 17. Okay, 9.3. Uh, the behavior known as load after reason. So if if I have not gone through it myself on this behavior, but if there is a behavior, then we would be addressed to a bug fix uh, or a bug would be uh, raised according to that. So I have not seen this locally yet, but uh, if so, if something uh, has been affected in your environment, I would suggest you to open a tag case for this. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see here. Do do do. Just scrolling through. I want to make sure that we get to a couple of these for sure. Um, right. Is it possible to use the PYATS to automate the test and get a snapshot of the SD WAN overlay network before and after the upgrade? Is it this one's from Ernesto? A little bit further down. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. So, is it possible to use P? Okay, yeah. So, uh, for the snapshot, again, uh, any of the VM should work, and uh, you can use this uh, uh, to automate the test. And you also have other options to automate. It's not just with the other third-party environment. Like, say, you can still go with SAS3 and uh, API options available to do the pre-check and post-check and do the snapshots as well for SD-WAN. And uh, I also see that uh, Aura tool for SD-WAN, again, it's nothing but like a sure tool, uh, S-U-R-E, we say. It's a script for your on-premises environment. It gives you all of the informations of your environment, like say your cap capabilities or entities involved in uh, developing your uh, uh, vManage, the basic, the controllers, like the space, the vCPUs, the memory, all the things in intact or not, how things would work in your environment. That's the sure tool. So you can still go for it. You can uh, you, you can uh, run the sure tool, the aura for SD WAN, and you can take the report out of it. Perfect. Thanks for jumping in and uh, and answering yeah. that uh, for helping me on there. Uh, last Thank question. Um, da, da, da. I think you've seen that the is upgrade for eight CHS right? Uh, so I'm planning the upgrade for uh, yes. eight huge devices distributed among four DCs, two edge and per DC. Okay, what would be the best strategy? Do all the edges the same day or schedule maintenance with each DCs? How long do I have to wait to start upgrade an edge in the DC? Okay, so it is, yes, as you said, it's um, uh, good to go with one DC site per, if, uh, at the beginning and uh, go with uh, every site uh, upgrade the site uh, one of the edge site first and if it's a two router environment upgrade the first one and then go for the next as well and how long in the sense it's just that um, people usually for a safer site we say 24 hours but uh, we know how the environment is usually when i do in the lab environment with less traffic running around so i'll just wait for a couple of hours and then go for it so that can depend on your environment how well uh, how you are comfortable with your environment so it's always good to wait for 24 hours to go for the next uh, upgrade and move on to the each of the dc environment so it's always dc first and then your sites can go for it um yeah can you write the Perfect. name of the script just mentioned for on prem uh sure to <laughs> perfect me to that also and uh <clears throat> did it okay sure tool can you write the oh so i should click on that sure script IP. All right. Um, at that this point, it does seem like that has uh, covered all our questions. Um, Suthin Duran, is there anything yeah. uh, that you want to cover before we wrap up here? Uh, no, all good. Good luck with if anybody's uh, going to uh, go for the upgrade. You can always uh, refer uh, your uh, CCO downloads options, the YouTube videos as well from Cisco. So go for it. 
And, Perfect. Uh, thank you so much. Want to want to thank you for a great presentation and demo today. Um, and want to thank you, the whole team, for bringing your your knowledge to the Cisco community today. Um, I have shared that link for where you can find the post webinar discussion thread to today's session. Um, in there, uh, you can ask any further questions or any follow up on today's session. If you do have a question, we will keep the Q and A window open for a couple of minutes. For even more tutorials, demonstrations, and future webinars, please visit the Cisco Learning Network. Recordings uh, will be linked and uh, provided on our learning plan in roughly five to seven business days. Um, I'll place a link to where that recording will be available uh, on the Cisco Learning Network as well. Your feedback is important to us, and at this time, you'll be directed to a post-webinar survey. Please take the time to participate in that. It helps us plan out future sessions um, that we can bring to y'all each and every month. Once again, we thank everybody for joining us today, and we will see you next time on the Cisco Learning Network.